All right, in our last lesson of the unit, lesson 1.6, infinite geometric series, we're going to look at, of course, geometric series that do not stop. So, an infinite geometric series has an infinite number of terms. So if you recall the last section, um, it had a finite number of terms. For an infinite geometric series, if the sequence of partial sums converges to a constant value as the number of terms increases, then the geometric series is convergent and the constant value is the finite sum of the series. This sum is called the sum to infinity and is denoted by S sub infinity. Example one. Um, determine whether each infinite geometric series has a finite sum. Estimate each of the following. So if you take a look at this one, it says 1 third plus 1 twelfth plus 1 48th plus 1 uh, over 192 plus da 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 da. What we're going to try and see is when you add these together, if they end up um, converging. So if you take a look, the sum of the first term is just 1 third. The sum of the first two terms is equal to, of course, 1 third plus one twelfth, or the first term plus the second term. And if we add these together, we have to get a common denominator. So we would have 4 out of 12 plus 1 twelfth is equal to 5 twelfths. Okay. So if we take a look and change these to decimals, we have 0.3 repeating so far, and this would be 0.416 repeating so far. Okay. I don't expect you to know those. You would hammer those out with your calculator. And let's see how these change. If I go S3, I'll have the sum of the second term, or the first two terms, I should say, plus 1 over 48. So the sum of the first two terms is 5 twelfths plus 1 out of 48. I have to get a common denominator again. That makes it 48. It's probably the easiest. And add these together, and I get 21 out of 48. When you put that into your calculator, you're going to get point. 4, 3, 7, 5. So they're increasing ever so slightly. If we put in the fourth one, we have the sum of the first three terms plus 1 over 192, so not a whole lot that we're adding anymore. And we have 21 out of 48 plus 1 out of 192. Getting our common denominator, it'll have to be out of 1 and 192. So multiplying 48 by, I think it would be 4, yeah. 4 will give you then 84. And adding these, we have 85 out of 192. And so you're going to see this one's not going to change quite as much. We're going to have 0 decimal 4427. And so if you look, these numbers all seem to be converging. So what we can say about these is these partial sums appear to get closer. to the finite sum of approximately, not exactly, but I'd say 0.44. Okay. So let's try another one. Let's see if the same thing is happening here. So if we look, we have negative 4, negative 8, negative 16, negative 32. Are these indeed converging? Well, the sum of the first term is negative 4. The sum of the first two terms is negative 4 minus 8, which would give you negative 12. The sum of the first three terms, we would have negative 12 minus negative 16. Sorry, minus 16. And uh, that's going to give you negative 28. And the sum of the fourth term is going to be negative 28 minus 32. That gives you negative 60. What do you notice about all of these? They definitely aren't converging towards anything. Right. So what we can say is, as the numbers, or the number of terms, increases, the partial sums do not converge. All right. They just get, they get more and more negative, not like the last one where everything was pretty much the same. 
So the series does not have a finite sum. OK, example C. Let's take a look at this one and see what's happening here. Uh, we have S1 is equal to 1 tenth. You notice this one's a little bit funky because it's adding, sorry, subtracting one, then adding one all the way through. But it is still possible that these can converge. S2 is going to be, of course, equal to 1 tenth plus 1 one hundredth. Getting a common denominator, this is 10 one hundredths plus 1 one hundredth. Ooh, I don't know why I have plus in there, that's not good. There we go, so of course we're subtracting that. Alright, that gives me 9 one hundredths. Okay, or I could write this as 0 0.1 over here, and I could write this as 0 0.9 here. So not 9, 0 0.09. And uh, let's go to the sum of the first three terms. So we would have that answer, so 9 out of 100, and this time we're adding 1 thousandth. And we get a common denominator. We have 90 out of 1,000 plus 1 out of 1,000. That gives you 91 out of 1,000, or 0 0.091. And let's do one more. If we take S4, we get that answer, so 91 out of 1,000, and this time, of course, we're subtracting. We get 910 out of 10,000, minus 1 over 10,000, and that gives you 909 out of 10,000. Or, as a decimal, 0 decimal, 0 0.909. Well, if you look at all of these, what do we see? We see that the sum for all of these is approximately the same thing. We have a finite sum, therefore, and we would say it's equal to approximately 0 0.09. So from the examples that we just did, uh, we see that the value of r determines whether an infinite geometric series converges or diverges. Okay, and of course, r being the common ratio. So if you consider the rules for the sum of n terms, for a geometric series, when we have this, all right, when r is between 1 and negative 1, okay, you might want to make note that that's what this means. It's read as when r is between negative 1 and 1. Okay, that's what that notation means right there. I think you've probably seen this before. So this is kind of interesting, because what ends up happening is as this number r right in here, um, if it's between 1 and negative 1, essentially making it, a, of course, like a fraction that's less than 1 or uh, greater than negative 1, um, no matter what it's raised to the power of, um, as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, if we do it to um, infinity, um, that becomes 0. So what we can do is we can actually replace that equation. We would say that um, this approaches t sub 1. And then instead of having 1 minus r to the n, we actually just have 0. All right? And this just becomes 1 minus r down here. And so we can replace this equation. And this is how we get the 1 right down here, where we say that instead of writing it as 1 minus r to the n, we can write this as s infinity is equal to t1 all over 1 minus r. And the reason it's just t1 in the numerator is because t1 times 1 is just itself. So we'll investigate some uh, examples here and, and take a look at this. An easy one to start. Determine whether each infinite geometric series converges or diverges. If it converges, determine its sum. So let's figure out. Well, we can easily, easily, easily figure out if it converges or diverges. All you have to do is figure out what r is equal to. And we know how to get r. You just take two terms and divide them by one. 8 divided by 32 is equal to 1 quarter or 0.25. Is that between uh, negative 1 and 1? Yes, so it converges. Well, now let's find out what it converges to. So we use our equation, s infinity is equal to the first term, all minus 1 minus the common ratio. Well, my first term was 32, all over 1 minus the common ratio. Well, the common ratio we just figured out was 0.25 or 1 quarter. So if we take 32 and we divide it by 0.75, we're going to get what this converges to. All right? And if you put this into your calculator, you find that it converges to approximately 
sorry, 42.6. Repeating. Let's try another one. All right. um, we first have to determine, does this converge? So we have r over here is equal to, I'm going to take negative 10 and divide it by 100. That gives me negative 1 tenth in lowest terms, or negative 0.1. Well, that is between negative 1 and 1. All right, so if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this rule right in here. If that ends up happening, then this must converge. Okay. So we know that it converges. We've achieved that. Let's find what it converges to. So my first term was 100. 1 minus the common ratio is that. So we have 1 minus negative 0.1. This is going to be 100 divided by 1.1 is equal to 90.90, repeating both the 9 and the 0 repeat like so. That's what it converges to. Okay. The last example that we get is going to be um, one that is, is kind of complicated. We're kind of going to work backwards. It wants you to determine a fraction that is equal to 0 0.16 repeating, where just the 6 is going to be repeating. It's kind of like asking this one right here saying like, okay, we have 90.90 repeating, can you write that as a fraction? Okay. So, here's what I want you to recall to start this one out. Recall what expanded form looks like. We can write 0 decimal 1, 6 repeating as equal to 0 0.1 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.006 plus 0 0.00 Zero, 06, da, 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 forever. Okay. Well, what I'd like to do, and I think you're going to find this is going to make things a little bit easier in a second here, is I'm going to write these all as fractions. This becomes 1 tenth. Remember, these are all going to be at a nice uh, multiples of 10. This will be 6 out of 100, 6 out of 1,000, 6 out of 10,000, and so on. And so, what we see right here is that these repeating digits form an infinite geometric series. So I'll show you why. Now, I've left out the 1 over 10 because, of course, that's not part of where it repeats. So what we can do here is if I take this term and divide it by the next term, I can figure out what r is going to be. So let's take r, and I'll take 0 decimal 006 divided by 0 decimal 06. You can use your handy calculator if you want. I'm sure most of you won't need this. We get decimal 006 divided by decimal 0, 06, and of course we're just going to get 1 tenth, or 0 0.1. So r is equal to 0 0.1. All right. Well, since we know that it uh, converges, then now we can go ahead and we can use our infinite equation here. Okay. So recall what it is. Actually, maybe I'll write it in blue, the equation here for you. Um, the sum of the infinite amount of terms is equal to the first term. equal to the first term divided by 1 minus r. Well, the first term here is um, going to be the 6 out of 100. Because what I'm just trying to focus on right now, folks, is just this repeating part. I want to take care of it, and then I can easily deal with the 1 tenth after. So I have t sub 1, which is 6 out of 100. And then I have 1 minus my common ratio, which is 1 tenth. OK, I'm just getting that from right here. If you want to all write those with decimals, that is Fine, too, no big deal. So now we have 6 out of 100, all divided by 1 minus 1 tenths, the same thing as 9 tenths. Okay. If you put this into your calculator, you can do that. Um, it's really up to you. You could have left it in decimals. I guess there's not really much of an advantage doing it this way. You have, um, let's do this all in one step. We have 6 divided by 100, all divided by 9 divided by 10. 
and 